Hey, welcome YouTubers. Welcome Zoomers. Nice to have you on board. It's Sunday, March 24th. We're going to do some Sunday sacred self-care yoga. And of course, we're always joined by my yoga partner here on my right side, Mr. Looney Cat. He's being very good. His paws are tucked and he knows he typically gets cat treats at the start of class. Anyway, settle in, take a load off. Easy does it. We're going to do some good human movement. We'll do some praying, some chanting, some meditating, and some movement, all designed to bring ourselves into alignment with something infinitely greater than ourselves. That is paradoxically ourselves. Nice deep breath together. Maybe swallow once, circle your jaw around. If you're wandering in for the first time on YouTube, we spend about an hour together. The first 10 minutes is relaxing on the back. I sit at the start to kind of manage the cameras and the YouTube and the Zoom and such, but whether you sit or whether you lie on your back, our intention is to let the wavelengths of our mind settle and relax. Give ourselves a respite from the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Did you want a cat treat? Did you want a cat treat? I take that as a yes. Tune into your breath, make a meditation, begin to feel the breath move in and out of your body. It's great to see you. the Zoomer, the uh, Zoomers are cruising in and all the friends on YouTube. It's fun to watch you guys live stream in. Hey, welcome. If you're just getting in, Looney Cat and I are hosting Sunday Sacred Self-Care Yoga. It's the opening 10 minutes. We got about three more minutes of lying on our back, relaxing, breathing, settling. I hope you have loved ones nearby, whether they have fur or flesh or feathers, it makes yoga all the more fun, especially the kind of yoga we're doing today, a lot of relaxing, restorative on the floor movements. Okay, now our breathing ideally is down to our belly now. So we're making a meditation out of diaphragmatic breath, the rise and the fall of our belly button.
And now that Sunday ritual where we spend one minute just feeling whatever our feelings are, catching up with the emotional nature. We might call it the emotional weather on the inside. My cat's purring so loud, I wonder if you can hear him. He sounds like a tiger purring. Yoga with cats is the best. Oh, good boy. Good. Are you feeling your feels? Are you catching up with yourself? Are you giving yourself an opportunity to observe your own emotional nature without repression, suppression, or... trying to change it. Very good, we did that. So now we're gonna take the biggest inhale that we can. Inhale, 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 fill it all up. And then exhale, let it all go. Empty the vessel, pull the plug, drain your brain. We are calm and empty souls. There's a good kind of empty, spacious, open, willing, ready, available. Okay, and then wiggle your fingers and toes and circulate some freshly conjured feel good through yourself. I try to remember to do this a few times. I'll just stop, take a breath, go inside and mentally intend and conjure feel good inside of my body. It's a great skill that we all could do. Good, feel all that. Good, and then take your, lace your hands, take your arms up over your head, palms pushing away. I found this on the web. And stretch your toes forward and kind of writhe around in first thing in the morning, stretchy feeling. Even that one stretch per day keeps you resilient, flexible, and springy. Goofy grin on your face. Good, now pull your knees in and roll around a little bit on your back. Just get ourselves going a little bit. Our movements are mild, they're tempered, they're calm and peaceful. That's yin yoga. Yang yoga is cartwheels, backflips, and hanging from chandeliers. I'm a big fan, but today is yin. Good. Let's roll up together. Happy Sunday, March 24th. If you're watching recorded, that's when we're doing this. So I'm checking my Eckhart Tolle Power of Now wristwatch. It's now, 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 now. Anyway, welcome aboard, whether you're all my Zoom friends and a growing group of YouTubers streaming in live. And a lot of people are watching the recorded session. So on the YouTube channel, Upward Spiral Yoga, there's 500 videos now of various Dharma talks, yoga classes, um, meditation, host of good things. Try it out and please like and subscribe. It's feeding the algorithm and then the algorithm algorithm sends yoga out to a world that could really use it. Most people are coming in now for the cat. His name is Looney Cat. He's being a very good cat right now. So part of the start of the class is actually the patience and the calm to simply sit and be with one another and be with your own cat if they're around. You're going to have to go all the way over to, to get that. There we go. Now, 
I promise to start in just a second, but I usually do this at the start of every class because this is the level of relaxation we're heading for. It's called cat laxation, like this. Just completely open, relaxed, willing, and super duper trusting as he takes a swing at my face. Anyway, let's chant Om together. You ready? Inhale. Oh, I'm going to tell you a little musical story. Music is yoga, of course you know that, but one of my music teachers, he a uh, session musician, plays everything, and one day he was in a session and he was talking to a trumpet player, and he was asking him about gaining skill in trumpet, and the trumpet player said, there's three keys to being a good trumpet player. The first one is air. The second one is more air and the third one is more and more and more and more air those are the three keys and so largely in our own sense of well-being more air most of us breathe very shallowly and we use a very small percentage of our capacity and yogis understood this thousands of years ago and they developed the art and science of pranayam pranayam means the control the management the utilization the tempering of our breathing such that we could deliver a sense of peace and calm and well-being inside of ourselves. So when I chant Om, I have an intention of extending it out. And it's not a competition. I know yogis who can e extend their exhalation three, four minutes. It's crazy to watch. But a lot of people can only extend their exhalation uh, eight or nine or ten seconds. And there's something to be said for opening up this capacity. Read the book breath by james nestor and you'll read a host of scientific studies very recent that indicate being able to utilize our breath and especially the extension of the exhalation how it brings about a psycho-emotional shift inside of ourselves blah 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 so let's try it again extend your ohm out without killing yourself because you want to be able to breathe after that Let's try it, okay? Big inhale. Eyes closed, feel that. What does a couple of ohms do for your disposition, your countenance? We are calm and peaceful souls. If you're waiting for the class to begin, it has. Sometimes I sneak in meditation, quiet, breathing, Okay, now we're going to bring our hands to our heart. Is this Sunday school? Kind of, but yogis call it Anjali Mudra. So if you're of a spiritual ilk, that's great. If you're religious, that's great. If you're not sure, that's great. If you're agnostic, I love eggnog. Close your eyes and simply pray or intend or aim your soul where you would like to go. If we don't aim... It's hard to hit a target. The unaimed arrow always hits its target. Excellent. And now we'll get going. I have these spare cat treats here. He departed. There we go. All right, shoulders, one. 
Now, before we do yin yoga, those patient movements of super ecstatic bliss, we're going to do some joint juice because it's legal now. And if I don't revolve and utilize my various joint parts of my body, then they'll tend to atrophy. And I don't want that. I got too many things to do. Other way. One, polish in my knees. Beautiful spring day out there. Get some yoga in and then put on our sundresses and go frolic. Six, seven, eight. Good job. Do I really have to say what this is? <laughs> Behind your back. Poof. It's a beautiful movement, isn't it? Body aesthetics. Plus, I'm kind of stimulating my back a little bit on the way up, my chakras. By the way, this is all we're doing for the next hour. So at about the 37 minute mark, one of your arms falls off. It's a disarming sequence. One more. Poof. Good. All right. It's all the time we have. So what I'd like for you to do now is drop your chin and close your eyes. And keep your chin dropped and keep your eyes closed. And when we drop our chin and close our eyes, we might say our inner vision is turned on and aim your inner vision down into technical term, your guts, where you feel things, your subterranean caverns of sensation, feeling, intuition, and connect your breath with your feels. If we get good at that, we get great information from our gut brain. We have more neurons in our gut than we do in our brains, meaning there's a lot of intelligence. It's just not the kind we're used to. Breathe what you feel, feel what you breathe. Maybe your body is sending you a message. Maybe it's time to quit my job. Maybe it's time to move to France. Maybe it's time to learn this. Maybe it's time to talk to this person I haven't talked to for a long time. Maybe it's time. What's the body telling you? For those who have ears, let them hear. Now this drives some people crazy. They can't sit still. They're just fidgety and jumpy and they can't sit still. And that's, it's hard for a two year old to sit still, isn't it? But if you're older than two years old, it's a skill we should have acquired by now. Now I can read minds after 50 years of doing yoga and I can read your mind. Your mind is saying, you know, I could be washing the clothes right now. Could be painting the house. Could be blah, blah, blah. But actually by doing nothing, you're being perfectly productive. Okay, drop your chin a little more and let's take coconuts around eight times. One, two, three, relax your shoulders. Stop thinking. Five, thinking is so tempting. So there's one thing all humans are addicted to it's thinking other way one two three four less thinking more feeling six seven 
Good. We'll return to chin drop for only 10 seconds this time. I promise I'm not going to torture you too much. I want you to come back. Now, here are two affirmations that are sinking deeper and deeper into my psyche. I am a calm, peaceful soul. I wasn't always. Things are always working out for me. Okay, let's switch across of our legs just to see what that feels like. A good deal of yoga is experimentation. Boy, look at all these cat treats. <laughs> I think I was going to fast today, but those look awfully tempting. Come on down, kids. Now, the key to successful yoga is to go to large studios filled with a bunch of extraordinarily adept 20-year-olds and then compare your body to their body and feel kind of guilty and shameful and less than. But we, in this class, we actually celebrate what our bodies do. We realize comparison is the thief of joy. 20 year olds have problems too. Now relax your hair. And I'm gonna come over to your house, put my hands on your shoulders and Push your shoulders wider across the top of your back. Elbows sink. Mind soars. This kind of yoga builds a very precious virtue. It's the vir virtue of patience, which is just so darn hard for me to learn. I want everything right now. I don't want to wait. I cannot live with unresolved issues. Come on up, you guys. Boy, it's great to see all you YouTubers in the analytics. Hands behind your behind. Let's do puffer fish with our buns. Puffer fish. Up you go. Uh. You can moan and groan in my class. You're at home. You can let it rip and come on down. Now we'll go back to this cross. I'm leaving for yoga retreat tomorrow. I have got to wash my clothes today. So see where my mind goes. It's like, how much longer am I going to be in this damn yoga class before I can? Do you have a mind like that? Yeah, that's why we're doing this. Beat your thenar eminences together. It's just oddly, sometimes the smallest things, there's a subtlety, there's a brilliance in the most simple things in life. Earlier in life, like, I don't know, six months, I'm 30 years ago, I, I needed a real sledgehammer of sensation to get my uh, attention. Now, small little things can be joyful. Okay, cats purr, 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 purr. Now, I do have a preponderance of cat lovers in my yoga class. So does that make you guys better than other yoga students? Yeah, it does. Yeah, purr, purr. Okay, now we're going to purr, purr down here. Purr, purr, purr. Bake that bread, knead that dough. Dough. Side to side. What does this do? Quit asking so many questions. Good. Now, up over the top, mm, up and up. Now, when my shoulders go over, my hands push down. This keeps me attached. Sometimes I inadvertently levitate. It's really embarrassing. So when I know, you know what, now is a bad time to levitate. I will push myself down into the oith. Seven. The unexamined body is not worth living in. You know who said that? Socrates, yoga instructor. Vulture capitalists. Back of hands in kneading dough pose. I need some dough, man. Do you need dough or do you need dough? <laughs> side to side. 
Where is this going? Is this going anywhere? No, we're already here, kids. This is it. Take every spiritual book ever written, all 80 billion of them, put them into a pressure cooker, distill them down into a drop that includes three words. This is it. Up and over. I'm going backwards and up over the top. Oh, crack, crack, crack. Some of you in my class are say older than 30. You've had a lot of uh, you've had a lot of life experience. You've you know, those bumper car rides at the uh, amusement park. Remember those you'd get in and you wouldn't try to miss people. You would intentionally slam into them. <laughs> That's life. You don't try to miss people. You intentionally slam into them and then you get a few dents, have a couple accidents, but you learn seven. Okay, I'm bending my wrists, I'm leaning forward, I'm straightening my arms, I'm dropping my chin, I'm closing my eyes, I'm doing ujjayi breath, and I'm doing integral calculus. Eight out of nine ain't bad. Now your hands go floof off to the side, right? Okay, now hold the baby in your arms, palms up. You don't want to hold the baby with your palms down, do you? I don't know, but elbows together. That's better for the baby won't slip through the middle. And lean into thy pause. Pause when agitated, drop your chin. This is live stream of consciousness, every vibration. It doesn't even matter that I'm speaking English. It's Sometimes it's not even English. English is my second language. I have no first. It's a vibration that we're delivering here. It's infused with exactly side to side. Mm. Good job. If you haven't done this before, it's about time you did. This is a jellyfish going side to side in front of your face. This is the Ms. Pac-Man game from 1983. It's wob, 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 wob. Other way. Other way. If you think you don't need this, you're wrong. Faster, faster. Teenagers gossiping. I wonder if teenagers still gossip. Mean Girls, Lindsay Lohan. Faster, faster. Cup your hands at your heart and be a calm, non-gossiping, super duper peaceful soul. Oftentimes in quiet, our mind gets out of the way and Great downloads of wisdom, insight, inspiration can be dropped into us. I personally can't live without inspiration and guidance. I just one of those people I need a power greater than myself. Grateful to have it. Welcome if you're just getting in. Now, lace these self-same palms down here, kind of holding a bowling ball. Bring the bowling ball up, turn it over at your throat. That's a bad place to drop a bowling ball. Come to think of it, stretch up. I didn't get that. Can you try again? Siri, you're pissing me off. Now let's waddle side to side. Did you hear that? <laughs> I had one of my best friends come over. I've known him for 55 years. He's, he's 
a little edgy about modern technology? Is he a conspiracy theorist? Yeah, probably. But when he comes over, he asks me to unplug Siri and Alexa and um, my smart TVs and stuff. <laughs> so I accommodate side to side. Good. Knuckles on your head, knuckleheads. Knuckleheads for me is a term of endearment. Now, this is stimul stimulating your crown chakra, as, or as I like to call it, your clown chakra. Close your eyes. Be unusually happy for no reason. It's like, I can't be happy doing this. This is silly. When are kids the happiest? When they're being silly. And then you get to be, I don't know, what's the age? 14? Can't be silly no more. Stretch up. Turn right. Left hand, right knee, right arm behind you. And as I like to say, go screw yourself to the right. Close your eyes. Be yourself. Everyone else is taken. Spend a little time. Good, you guys. And come out of our opening twisty salvo. Switch across your pins. Whoop. <clears throat> now, lace one finger over the weird way. Is that it? Yeah, I guess that's it. Stretch in and retch in with Gretchen. That's She's my alter ego. Stretch in and retch in with Gretchen. Pretty fetching. Ugh. Just, I like to get wiggly and squiggly sometimes because there's one thing I note about people that seem to be aging too much. It's they've lost their wiggly and squiggly nature. So I ain't losing wiggly and squiggly. I'm going to have that going on till I'm lying in my Serta Sealy deathbed. Good. Knuckles on your head. Close your eyes. Now, with spinal uplift, feel your crown of your head kind of lifting up into your knuckles whilst relaxing your shoulders with your eyes closed. Don't try to figure this out. Figuring out one of my classes is the booby prize. The true prize is an overwhelming flood tide of bliss, love, joy, and ecstasy. <laughs> That's all. I don't claim much. Good. Pause up. Er, way up. Oh, my goodness. Extra, extra space. Turn super left, 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 right hand, left knee. Go screw yourself. Now, I push into my hands. I root my bottom. I'm a bottom rooting kind of guy. And I turn my whole vertebras to the left. And then my head, after I get all of from the neck down to turn, then there's some room for my head to go to the left. And even with my eyes closed, I turn my peripheral vision more to the left. And that stimulates cute little muscles in my neck. Stop thinking, not forever, just, just for now. Inhale, and we'll get out of that mess. Good job. Four on the floor, kids. Two paws, two feet. Exhale. Bottoms up. There's something exhilarating about arching your spine, isn't there? And escalating your hindquarters to heaven. Here you go, God, I give you not only my head and my heart, but my buns lift up. I think that's a problem. A lot of people will give their head and their heart, but not their buns. Good. All right, come on down. Or as I like to say, it's pretty easy to turn your life and will over to the care of God from the waist up. Let's um, massage the middle center bottom of our feet. By the way, the yoga police are always monitoring my class for 
um, inappropriate and blasphemous. So at any moment, if there's like a, if the screen goes black, it's nice knowing you. Oh, my feet. Do you have cute little feet? Do you have the kind of feet that would, could you be a foot model? Not me, man. Not me. Now push your thumb all the way through your feet, stimulate your Kridaya, your heart lung center of your foot. Now Greg has decided to lean forward. And as my pelvis tilts over the head of my femur bones, my thigh bones go sp splitting out to the side. So let's split together. Lean into the sensation. Keep your spine long, shoulders relaxed, breath moving. We're calm and peaceful souls. Good. And pleased to come up. So you, you want to be starting something. Michael Jackson, 1981. Pumping them legs. Of course, that's the precursor to this, where you just push your knees all the way down and straighten your arms. So if you can't, I teach incremental. So if you can't do this, then just, oh, God, it's just too tight. Can't do that. Okay, then from a, a pose that really fits my body beautifully to one that doesn't, but you're going to like it. Take your right knee over your left. Take your left ankle out like twisty tie. Mermaid position. Lean back and look in pretty super cool pose. Now, I'm stopping here. I have many friends who can easily just go splat on their back in this pose. They just never couldn't do it. They're super excellent at it. They make it look like a breeze. I make it look more like a hurricane. Now, if I stay in this pose for a minute, and I am, I'll be able to get down to my elbows, but I'm not in a big rush. Later today, I'll be in a big rush. And all you have to do is be in this pose. This pose is a prayer. And it will do things to you and for you that you can't begin to understand with your rational mind. If you feel really tight and lost and hopeless and then boy, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. This is yin yoga, Y-I-N. We're not trying to prove anything. We're not trying to push or promote or prod or be superior or do it better than somebody else. Or you're just occupying your own body, your own capacity, your own breath your own awareness, such as you are here in this moment. There's a great deal of acceptance in yin yoga. So after a minute or so, I'm down on my elbows and now I'm really riding the edge. And if you think 
golly, you've done yoga for 50 years, bro. You should be able to be more flexible, I would say to you. Don't judge me. Good. Come on up, kids. Now, hey, we're back here just sitting in mermail pose. Now, from my fists or our palms, we're just going to do offering our hips to heaven. We're turning our life and our will over to the care of higher power from the waist down. Lift up. Oh, and please to be sinking down now, part. Let's unwind from that. Let's jiggle our joints for a moment. Jiggle, wiggle. Woo. By the way, you YouTubers, here's the motto. Like this, whether you like it or not. Subscribe, whether you want to or not. And share, whether, just share it, okay? Let's get this out there. World needs this. It's a big year out there. Let's make sure the world keeps going. We want a place for our grandchildren. So yoga will help. Now, left knee over your right. How many grandchildren do you have, Greg? Working on it. All right, now, see this left knee went over the top, the right ankle is a twisty tie. All you bendy ragdolls, movie star friends, you're just gonna lay on your back and look super groovy. I'm gonna be up here and look, um, like this. Did I explain it properly? Maybe I didn't. Left knee over your right knee, right ankle over the top, hands behind you, and lean back. Maybe on your elbows, maybe on your hands, and maybe on your back. Breathe more down from your belly button. If you're a super bendy bear ragdoll movie star person, arms back up over your head because it's just, why not, man? Why not? It's not bragging if you can do it. Be at ease inside of your own skin. Okay, my friends, and let's get ourselves up out of this pickle, shall we? Come on back up. It seems days since we've chanted, chanted an ohm together. So remember how we're extending it out just to build up that physiological um, exhale capacity that makes us happy and peaceful souls. Whopping big inhale. Eyes closed, stop thinking. Excellent. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to move into a, um, a pose that's filled with, how would Russell Brand say this? with controversy. This pose is, has controversy, controversy. 
Why do British people talk so weird? Blocks, psychological block, emotional block. So for a lot of people, kneeling is a challenge. Now, back in the day, I could kneel very easily and I could um, bring my butt right down to the floor. But now because of a little meniscus thing here, I need to be very careful when I kneel. So the cool, one of the coolest things about my class, which is the coolest class, is that you can make modifications. So instead of kneeling with my butt on the floor, now I just kneel and I sit up on a couple blocks. There I go. There I go again. Ronald Reagan to Jimmy Carter, 1980. There you go again, right? <laughs> That's going to make a lot of my students really happy to hear that, I'm sure. So I'm sitting way up here, but maybe you're a really good kneeler and you can kind of mush your knees in together and widen your feet and your buns will come down to the floor. But it's not, I'm teaching a principle here. The principle is find the shape that suits your body. Right now, my, my booty buns are this high up off of the floor. I've had a butt lift, okay? So this is what I'm doing. And now I look like a polite school child. Surely there must be something more than this. There is. Now, bring your left foot out like that. There's some people that can't do that no more. It's like they can't kneel no more. And if they did kneel, they certainly wouldn't be dragging their left foot out. Don't be one of those people. <laughs> now, pull your heel way in underneath you, this left one. And now I'm going to lean over my left thigh. And if you do this properly, and you should, don't do it improperly, you're going to feel this. I'm going to use a variety of adjectives this sumptuous, delicious, provocative, miserable, burning, horrifying, prickly, delicious, or to use that word, stretch of your lower left calf muscle. And nobody ever stretches this, so you're tight as a dead mule down here. Other people are. Lean into this. And as I like to say, if you don't like it, too bad. I only want to do stuff that I like. To me, this looks like Rodin's The Thinker pose. That little thinker. That's an old joke. What was Rodin thinking about in that sculpture? Where did I leave my clothes? <laughs> no inadvertent laughing in my class. Oh, my calves are mooing. They are just mooing. Moo is ohm spelled backwards. Oh, geez, I can barely take any more. Two more breaths. Good kitty mittens. Let's come up out of this. Yay. Now, this is half kneeling and half squatting technical term. Okay. But take this leg, kind of shove it over this way. Uh, some of my internally rotated friends, you know who you are. This will really tilt in. It's almost like you could cross your thighs almost. Hold this here. This go. Look, look how elegant this move, movement is. Uh, woo. Inhale. Exhale, turn super left and hook your elbow, maybe your shoulder outside your knee. Does your right hand fit on the floor? And now lean back into your thigh. And this is going to squeeze the, um, the stuffing out of you. Almost said a bad word. Lean in. It's a twist, it's a forward fold, it's a calf stretch, it's a shoulder relief.
this rings us out. W R I N G S. Some people haven't been wrung out for like 10, 15, 30 years, and it's like, no wonder we get opinionated and stuck and stinking thinking bad ideas. Not us. Okay, let's come out of that mess. Take this, put this back in, drug this out. The good kind of drug. Now, having gotten here and now you really bendy bears, you thousands of people watching all over the world, you might be kneeling and your butt cheeks are on the floor and your right heel is in and boy, that's really cool. Maybe you're sitting way up here on blocks. Pull the heel as far as you can underneath you and then Rodan's the thinker, lean it over. Now, technically, technically, if we dropped a plumb line from the front of our right knee straight down, that plumb line would be as far forward as of our right toes as possible. Some people have more ankle flexibility. Speaking of ankle flexibility, I mean to tell you, Jake Gillendahl, his new movie Roadhouse, looks like he put on about 50 pounds of lean muscle mass. That guy is buff, man. But there's a scene from one of the trailers and he's at a beach in Florida. And his squat is amazing. He is deeply squatting and his heels are down. And am I jealous of him? Sure am. Sink in, you guys. This pose begins right when you want to get out of it. It's like a marriage. The marriage begins the first moment you want to get out of it. That's when marriage starts. We'll do some really cream puff, floaty cloud, rainbow unicorn pose after this, okay, I promise. Okay, that's, that's enough of that. All right, yuck. Now we'll come up. Now, the internally rotated set, as they come up, this right knee is gonna push way over to the left. It's almost like, it's, I call it mini skirt pose. Your thigh bones are rolling inward. And then this left arm is going up to the full moon tonight. Did you know that? Reach up, oh, way up. Inhale. Exhale, turn super far to the right with long extendo spine. Then come down to the right elbow. Now, back in the day, I could get my shoulder all the way outside my knee, but I have other things to do now. And then I'm just going to lean down into this. I'm still going to lean down into my right thigh, stretching my Achilles tendon and lower right calf muscle. I'm going to get the biggest twist ever. Going to release my shoulders, going to drop my chin. But most importantly of all, is I'm going to slow down and calm the movement my mind when i do that inspiration grace mercy wisdom comes flooding in can't live on yesterday's mana you guys Here today, gone to mana. Lean in a little more. Ooh, right there.
Hey, kitty cats, good. Let's come up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I feel like $100 after that now. Look at that. I drug both feet out. That's really hard if you're not sitting on blocks. So sorry about that. And this is old person squatting pose right here. So just kind of leaning forward. I'm, this is called Jake Gillendall pose, except my heels aren't down and I don't have 80 pounds of raw lean muscle mass. That's okay. Good. Now, if you're sitting on blocks, let's disembark, shall we? If you're not, you don't need to. Now, as promised, we should do something that feels extra super spectacular right now, right? Because we're nearing the, oh, it's high noon. You know what high noon means? It means we're going to get high together on our own supply. We'll chant an ohm. You can sit however you want. <clears throat> Hands down here. <clears throat> Exhale all the air out. calm and peaceful souls. One day at a time. Excellent, you guys. So I thought today, given that we've done some challenging stuff that we would finish in about a super supported eight or nine minute Shavasana. Usually people don't complain about that very much. So what I was thinking is that we wouldn't do just regular Shavasana. We would do uh, super modified custom Shavasana. That's for my neck. <clears throat> this is where my ankle, this is where my ankles are going to go. Um, this is where my knees are going to go. Now, how am I going to, how am I going to fit over this? And we're just doing a good old fashioned happy joy waterfall. My, see my body, I'm a river, right? You can't step into me in the same place twice. You can step on me. My ankles are supported. My knees are supported. This kind of unweights my butt cheeks a little bit. I'm going to lift my hind quarters and jiggle them out a little. I don't want dented buns, shoulder blades. Oh, and the neck roll allows my brains to relax back. And I'm just going to forget about it. I've made it this far. God didn't bring me this far to drop me on my head. Everything is unfolding and we can take seven minutes off together. If you just happen to be tuning into the YouTube live stream, it's not a dead guy on the floor. It's just somebody doing Shavasana, which does mean corpse pose. And feel free to join us.
Okay, my beautiful friends, stay relaxed in the pose. There's that guy's voice from a million miles away. Take your time. Breathe back toward your bod. And this is that wonderful ritual we do every Sunday where if you'd like, you could invite God love sport source spores into yourself, infinite higher organizing principle, never from coercion or convincing, purely from choice. Even something as simple as, come on in, God love source. Doesn't matter how you say it, as long as it's said without reservation, But if you said that little prayer with me, wiggulate your fingers and toes, circulate extra super cosmic feel good through yourself. Good. When you're ready, please to curl onto your right side. Now feel the love the universe has for you, like the love that you have for your child. Except multiply that by about a trillion. Good. Now please keep your eyes closed when you sit up. There's a powerful reason for doing that. We cultivate center, we build sanctum sanctorum. My Latin's a little rusty. Good, we'll bring pause into our heart, we'll drop our chin, we'll close our eyes, and we'll just cultivate that beautiful feeling of holy, sacred, and reverent, those ineffable experiences that make us so much more than just these individual parts. And as our friend Rumi said, out beyond the realms of right thinking and wrong thinking, there's a field, I'll meet you there. And all together they say, Namaste. <clears throat> okay, as always, I bid adieu, adios, arrivederci, and avidasane to my YouTube friends. Like and subscribe down below if you'd like to chat with me or do a life coaching appointment. You would really like it. Go to UpwardSpiralYoga.com. Check it out. It's good stuff. And thank you for liking and subscribing. I really appreciate it. It's spreading this all over the place.